A volcano goddess named Keegan is loose in the world, and the prophecies are unclear. Will her coming bring humanity's destruction or its salvation? In the shadow of a sacred volcano lies the ancient city of Azar. To unravel the mysteries of her past, Keegan and her friends must get to Azar before it is overrun by a horde of forest monsters and before primeval forces extinguish Keegan's flame permanently. We got it. Hi everybody, welcome to another installment of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. This time we're talking Firebug. This is an underrated book, an overlooked book I should say, from uh, 2018 I guess. In a nutshell, this is set in a non-disclosed location that kind of reminds me of South America, probably a little bit of Rio here and there, where this cult adores this uh, volcano goddess. There is also this small teenaged group, or actually young adult, I guess I should say, uh, called the Third Wave that want to set the goddess free because they don't believe uh, what the cult is doing is the right thing to do. And uh, it is within this third wave that we meet basically our three main uh, characters. Keegan, of course, I already mentioned her at the beginning of the video, this uh, uh, fire goddess. Uh, we also get Adria and uh, Griffin. And these three characters are basically the nucleus of the story. They are somewhat, um, or at least two of the characters are romantically involved. The other is trying to get these two characters to uh, work uh, with her, in the case of Adria, so that they can uh, go into the cult's headquarters, if you will, and set this fire goddess free. And basically, she is of a volcano. And if you have followed mythology or uh, religions uh, throughout history, the volcano can represent power, a force of change. It is passion and it is fierce. And a lot of religions across the world in ancient times viewed the volcano as such a thing, whether it be uh, the force behind a deity's wrath or an actual deity itself. Now, the story in and of itself is actually pretty interesting. What we're getting is basically a superhero origin story disguised during myth and legend type of tale with the character of Keegan representing our main heroine and her journey to uh, free the supposed volcano goddess. The book itself is only three issues long. It debuted back in the comic book uh, named Island. I think it was issue seven and enough interest uh, was there that warranted the uh, publication of an original graphic novel. And the story goes into um, myth, creationism, and the way people are impacted by those themes. And you have the character of Keegan trying to find herself and her purpose throughout her life. She realizes that she has been living uh, by a set of rules and not really allowing herself to experience life for what it could truly be and this might be some slight spoilers but you do find out almost right away in the story that the fire goddess is keegan's mom something happens which i won't spoil but let's just say our our main protagonist acquires certain fire abilities and the title of goddess herself and she sets about this epic journey to reach the land of Azar and she's going into uh, this volcano to fulfill a prophecy. Now the character of Griffin on the other hand is at the beginning of the story he's not very likable he's a little douchey and then turns kind of wimpy but at the end of the day he served a purpose and there are a couple of foes in this book there are two main forces of nature that are against uh, the fire goddess returning to Azar and one of them has to do with water so it's an interesting dynamic of course it's a very uh, cliched thing I guess a fire goddess and a water presence you know this fire and water fight is a little bit refreshing and that is in part by the art 
of this book done by Tamra Bonvillain. I think I said that right. The art in this book is, I'll be honest with you, the main uh, thing why I approached this title. I had no idea what Firebug was about, but as soon as I saw this amazing looking cover, I had to check it out. And I am glad I read the book. You know, there are some issues with it. There are some troubles. Uh, the villains are a little bit one note. Like I said, when you're dealing with mythology, uh, certain roles are already predestined and the story follows a beaten path that you expect. And by the end of it, uh, it, it leaves the door open for a sequel, but I don't really see it getting another title. I might be wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong and more people are in interested in this book and want to uh, pick it up. But uh, yeah, it leaves the door open, you do get a main uh, villain, but regardless of all of that, the art is gorgeous, it is beautiful. Some of my favorite things in the book is the actual art and the way everything is uh, laid out, as you can see right there, with this whole bluish theme for the aquatic scene, and then a couple pages later, you get this reddish... Uh, uh, hue for uh, the brick walls and all that stuff and it plays beautifully with the concept of color and contrast beautiful usage of colors on this book is something to behold in my honest opinion some of the best artwork here is one of my favorite panels with the uh, fiery explosions of the volcano and Bond villain it just knocks it out of the park in my honest opinion just look at that specific image, one of my favorite uh, panels, and, and and like I said, it, it deters from the whole mythological thing and gives you butt-kicking action in a very super heroic kind of way. Like, this is something that would uh, be across the big two, a Marvel or a DC book, but no, it's an image title. It's 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 its very own thing, and the uh, uh, writer for this, Johnny Christmas, is able to give these characters unique voices even though sometimes the explanations and the uh, uh, exposition dialogue that happens across the middle portion of the book tend to drag things down there is a narrator which turns out to be like this historian type character uh, I, I did not like those scenes because they uh, it's a lot of dialogue that well, it's not a lot of dialogue, but it's it's a lot of wording that bring the story to a halt. I would have appreciated uh, some shorter dialogue boxes or something that would have sped things along. And that, by the way, is one of my main problems with the book. It's just three issues. And I don't think that was enough time to uh, fully embrace this world because there is some world building but you don't really get a sense of what's happening until you're thrown right in the middle of the stuff by uh, issue two. Like I mentioned, it's just three issues. They're a, a little longer than your normal uh, comic book uh, issues, but nonetheless, it definitely felt like it needed more substance and needed a, a little bit more visually storytelling kind of way, not through heavy dialogue. The story was just a tiny little bit predictable, but nonetheless, it's filled with very passionate drawings and a sense of glee and wonderful world building with amazing visuals, great character designs. I love the character designs in this book. Everybody felt uh, unique, at least for the main characters, they felt separate. Some of the background characters, not so much. But uh, for our main characters, the one that we really care about, they felt unique. Especially Keegan with her uh, afro and her sense of uh, awareness and her clothing and all that stuff. Especially when she's powered on like you see at the cover of the book. It really looks unique, flavorful, filled with gusto, I guess I should say. Uh, to add a fancy word in there. And I think you're going to like it. If you're in the itching for something unique, a little bit different, with some familiar tropes, then maybe consider getting Firebug. I enjoyed it. It's not the best story, 
but it's certainly not the worst if that means anything to you guys. Thank you everybody for liking, commenting, subscribing, and doing all that wonderful stuff that you guys do. Find me on your favorite social media platform, and I will catch all of you on our next episode. Wow.